and we are so excited that you are joining us today as we get to meet Farmer Matt and, of course, your adorable calves, Dixie, Honey, and Sadie. First, this live chat is part of the Adopt-A-Cow program. More than 40,000 teachers and 1 million students every year join the fund for free, thanks to our generous supporters like the Dairy Alliance and the Dairy Excellence Foundation. The Adopt-A-Cow and Discover Dairy program are free online resources that cover common core standards in math, reading, and science, all while using dairy concepts to teach those lessons. If you want to learn more, you can go to discoverdairy.com, and we'll go ahead and put that in the chat for you so you have easy access to that link. We'd also love for you to join the Adopt-A-Cow Fund next year. So if you're interested in joining again or you're new to the program, you happen to find this live chat on YouTube and you want to check it out next year, registration and enrollment opens on May 1st. If you are already part of the program, you simply just need to click a button to re-enroll. And if you're new, you have to go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt, register, and then get started. Again, that's on May 1st. Next, as everyone continues to join us live today, you will see that that chat feature is enabled. Please feel free to use that chat feature to comment and ask questions all throughout our time together today. We do ask that you please just keep those questions and comments school appropriate and related to our conversation with Farmer Matt. I know we are excited to hear your questions and I know Farmer Matt is excited to answer them. And before we go over to him, let's see who is joining us today. So let's go all the way to the top of our chat. And we've got one of the first classes to join us, um, said they were from Greenville, North Carolina, Miss Montoya. So hello and good morning all. Thanks for hopping on today. We've got Jarrett uh, from Windsor, North Carolina. We have some folks from Warsaw. We've got Harmony Elementary School in Harmony, North Carolina. Good morning, everybody. We've got some folks from Mount Airy, Lewisburg, um, Cary, Willard, more from Harmony Elementary School. We're excited to have all of you. Very cool. We've got some folks from Salisbury. We have um, Dixon Road Elementary in Willow Springs. Hello and welcome all. We've got Whitnell Elementary, uh, Compass Academy in Hickory, Sunnyview Elementary, second graders in Polk County. Um, let's go down a little bit further. We've got the Cool Cat first graders from Wilmington, China Grove, North Carolina kindergartners. Um, down here a little bit further yet. Um, we've got more Mrs. Gentles class. Hello and good morning. And Mrs. Jordans from Harmony. So I know there's many others that are joining us today. Thank you for letting us know where you're coming from. I know Farmer Matt likes to hear where everyone's coming from and so do we. So without further ado, I am excited to introduce you to Farmer Matt. Hey Farmer Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Hope you are. We are. We are excited to be here with you and finally kind of wrap up our year with you, um, get to learn a little bit more about you, your farm, and of course, get the final update on how our girls are doing. So I'll let you take it away. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Uh, glad y'all could join us this morning. Um, uh, we're here in Statesville, North Carolina, uh, in the Cool Springs community of Iredell County. Uh Currently, we're milking probably, I think, 225 cows at the moment. Um, that's that's a little high for us, uh, but uh, we, we've got uh, probably 35, I think, 35 little baby calves on the bottle oh. at, at the moment. Uh, that's, that's about a full-time job in itself, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, the... I've got my son Bryson and my wife Amanda. We we do this uh, full time um, uh, along with uh, my wife's parents. Uh, they're uh, they're the actual owners of the farm. Um, we're we're just uh, basically managing and and kind of co own as well. Um, uh, we we all own. Uh, uh, a lot of the uh, the cows, uh, her mom and dad own several, and and we own several. It's just a a, a joint effort, basically. Um, uh, we're we're currently uh, trying to get geared up to uh, start planting some corn uh, and chopping some uh, small grain uh, for silage uh, to to feed to the milk cows. Um, it's it's a busy time of year. 
<laughs> it sounds like it. You guys have your hands full with a bunch of babies. And I know you mentioned bottle babies, which is even more time consuming to help to make sure they're Absolutely. getting on their bottle. And then plus, yeah. like you said, all of the crop and field work that's coming up. And it's a busy time of year in the spring. So we really appreciate you taking some time with us today. And 200 no 200 plus animals that you're milking. That's, that's a lot. Um, Farmer Matt, when you milk those cows, um, where does the milk go after it leaves your farm? Okay. Um, good question. The, the, our milk truck comes every other day and picks up the milk. We have a 2000 gallon tank that holds the milk. Um, currently uh, we're, we're shipping about, uh, 17,000 pounds of milk every other day um, that milk it it usually ends up in Asheville North Carolina at at the milk plant up there uh, or in Winston-Salem uh, which is only about 35 minutes uh, from the farm here uh, and and I, the the milk uh, it, it'll end up in Ingalls stores so Feel free to shop at your local Ingles nice. and support uh, uh, us as well. Oh, I love that. So go to Ingles and then you'll, it's like, it's possible you'll be getting milk from Dusty Road Jersey Farm. That's really cool. Now, I know you mentioned about 200 that you're milking. How many cows total do you have on your farm, including like your young stock, your calves, your heifers, red heifers, everything like that? All together. Uh, right at 450 uh, is that's wow. about where it's, it's staying, uh, uh, you know, give or take, you know, different times of the year and stuff. But uh, right now we're, we're staying right around 450 and out of that 450, there's um, uh, 20 of uh, a beef cross uh, that, that we started uh, uh about 15 years ago uh and they've just multiplied and and we've sold several of them and stuff so uh there okay. there's there's about 20 uh, uh beef cow or beef cows uh all together um uh, and and seven of that number uh is baby calves born all in the last six weeks oh my <laughs> goodness <laughs> they all hit the ground running wow that's cool so you've diversified a little bit and not only have you done dairy but you're also adding a little bit of beef into your farm do you have other animals at all on your farm beyond cows do you have any dogs or pets or anything like that yeah uh we have two dogs two uh they're one's a blue healer one's a red healer uh they uh they love to come and help get the cows up and, and bring them to the barn twice a day. Um, we also uh, have some mules. Uh, they're, they're pretty much just yard ornaments, uh, something to look at. Uh, <laughs> and, and we have a few horses as well and, oh. and chickens and some guineas uh, and, and uh, several barn cats. Oh, nice. I haven't seen it come across yet, but I'm sure the question will be asked. Do you know what your horse's names are or do they have names? I'm sure that question will come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one is, is Reese. Uh, one is Domino. And let me see. I can't even think of the, the third horse's <laughs> name right off. You put me on the spot, so now I can't think about it. <laughs> All good. Maybe I'll come back to you and we'll, we'll think of it later. <laughs> right now, you're focusing on our three adorable calves. So uh, we totally understand. And obviously, we are seeing them right now. I cannot believe how big they are getting. Farmer Matt, do you want to give us an update on how they're doing? Remind us which one is which, because they kind of all look alike. Um, so just give us a reminder on, on each one, and then how are all of them doing? Okay. Uh, as you can see, they're they're all uh, very healthy and, and hungry. Um, I believe uh, we're, we're looking to get the – okay, looks like uh, Sadie's right here on the end. Uh, then we have Honey, and then we have Dixie. Um, all three of these were just recently shown uh, at the 
all breed show in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Um, we we had Dixie in our show string, and Sadie and Honey. They took a field trip to Davy County High School. Uh, their FFA group gets roughly a dozen calves uh, from like fall, winter age, and and maybe uh, summer. Um, so so everything's pretty much not a year old that that they get from us uh they try to get smaller stuff that way you know less chance of people getting hurt mm -hmm. uh but um i think they this year i believe they got 14 heifers from us and sadie and honey were were two of them um i i, I do have some pictures that uh, I'm going to try to post on Facebook this week uh, of them and the the kids that handled them uh, at the fair or at the show rather. Um, but uh, right now uh, they're 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 doing excellent. Uh, if uh, if I had to guess, uh, they're they're all uh, 300 pounds plus uh, wow. at this point. Um, just uh, they're 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 growing by the day. Yeah, absolutely. Look at how cute they are. And I, we can see that they're, um, for anyone that might not know what they're looking for, you can definitely tell they're, they're trimmed down, their hair has been cut. And we can see that little mohawk across the top, which you call yep. a top line, I believe, yep. um, to help make them look as beautiful as possible when they walk into that show ring. So that's awesome. Yeah, so if you're you're probably thinking, I know at six months old we had said they're probably around 310 pounds, so we're probably over 350, three. Like, yeah, right yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. They are growing big and strong, and I love that they got to go to a show and and get to play uh, play dress up, I guess, for a little bit and get some special <laughs> food and everything. Look how pretty they oh, look yeah. when they walk. <laughs> and we've got we've got a nosy one friend getting all friendly with us here. Um, oh, so yeah. Farmer Matt, we love how much they have grown and they just look absolutely beautiful with sunbathing and uh, hanging out with you. Um, we noticed the one heifer just a little bit ago. The camera was watching her lick something up in the feed area. Can you just tell us what that was on camera? It kind of just like a rock, but I think it might have been some kind of mineral block that they can lick on. Is that correct? Yes, it, it's a, a, called a trace mineral salt block. Uh huh. Yeah. And that's something that they have access to anytime. Just to it, what's it for? I guess. Uh, it's it's just got some extra minerals in it that that they need, uh, and and the salt, uh, and and the salt, uh, is is has basically the same effect on them as it does us makes us a little thirsty you know helps us drink pr uh, plenty of fluids um okay. and and keep keep plenty of water in us yeah yeah we can't really tell them hey it's time to drink water so that helps them just remember okay it's time to drink more water time to eat more food um you know it's it's interesting you said that and i know they're getting lots of food and and growing really strong and healthy we did have someone just curious you know how come we can see their ribs? Can you talk about why they might look skinny, but that's actually a very healthy body condition? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, and, and dairy, you, you want to be able to see their ribs. Now, obviously, there, there's a fine line there. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want them too skinny. Um, but on the dairy side, you, you really don't want a, a fat cow uh because fat cows are are problem cows for us uh mm -hmm. as we're with beef uh the the more fat the better uh, pretty much <laughs> uh uh but on on the dairy side the uh, fat cows just they they just they don't reproduce mm -hmm. as as well and just more problems basically sure. yeah they're more of a they're more of an athlete type animal that they need to stay lean yep. they need to stay fit and also their body is is 
exactly what it's meant to do, which their energy is put into creating milk once they're um, of yep. age and are old enough to do it. So right now, where it's just it's just what they're they're putting on some weight and they're using their energy to grow. But once they are done growing, all of that energy goes into producing milk, and they don't store it like a beef cow does. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we've got a lot of people really excited to see their to see their girls, um, and they were kind of just watching them kind of hang out together. They were curious if you could talk about their personalities a little bit. Is there one that's a little bit more outgoing, or one that's a little bit more nosy, or anything like that? They're all pretty nosy, and and with uh, with them being shown, so they they've been handled uh, more. Uh, their their halter broke and stuff. Um, but uh, uh, Sadie, uh, Sadie's probably uh, the the most uh, uh, personable one. Uh, I, I think um, be a good good way to put it. Uh, she she likes to to lick on your arm and follow you around, maybe a little bit more than the others. Uh, but they're you know they they all have the the typical uh, Jersey nosy personality <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that that these are all jerseys and so you guys raise all jerseys and then obviously some beef but jerseys i agree they definitely have that more personable very curious personality um but there are other breeds right maybe some p- folks are used to seeing that black and white cow or something like that do you have any other breeds or are you guys just solely jerseys we only own jerseys, um, but we we have some friends that uh, show Brown Swiss and Ayrshire and stuff, and and we actually uh, milk those uh, for those people uh, because they they don't have uh, access to to the milking equipment and. Uh, yeah, we're we're already milking twice a day, so it, it's sure. easier for for them. Uh, if you know, as long as we're willing and as long as the cows will fit in our barn, that's that's the big issue uh, with with the bigger breeds. Uh, we we could milk like young brown Swiss or young Holsteins, young Ayrshires. Uh, but once they get, you know, maybe four or five years old, you know, they're, they're still growing and they're probably going to be too big for our barn because it's, it's set up for the, the smaller jerseys. Gotcha. That makes sense. So that kind of answers a question. Some folks were wondering, like, when is a cow considered full grown? So we know that they have a calf around two years old for the first time. And that's when they join the milking herd. But you would say that they keep growing a little bit after that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, somewhere between that that three and four years old mark, uh, that's that's about the time that that they stop growing. At least for us, mm-hmm. um, we we typically we we probably breed them a little bit younger. Uh, they're they're not quite as big when they calve in. Uh, mm-hmm. We're we're just trying to to stay ahead and. Uh, start trying to get a return on our investment basically uh mm-hmm. by, by getting milk a, a little quicker um but uh it, it works out pretty good for us uh yeah. doing it like that so yeah. they're in most of the most of the time uh our heifers are, are calving in uh typically a, a, at about 20 months uh okay. 20 to 22 months there okay yeah. And I mean, and it's, you obviously know what's healthy for your cows. You would know, everything a farmer does is for the health of the cow. And that's why they are so well taken care of. They've got clean bedding. They've got fresh food all the time. So um, for anyone else that, you know, maybe 20 months, like 20 month old human, that sounds really young, but a cow grows much faster than us humans. And that's pretty normal for them. They're, they're an old teenager or almost 20, 20 years old in human years at that point. So that's not, it's pretty standard. Is that right? Farmer Matt? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Awesome. We um, just wanted to let you know, we had a couple classes just saying thank you so much. And we actually had one class saying they have a puppet that they made that's meant to be modeling after you in their classroom. So just wanted to let you know you're famous in these classes all across <laughs> North Carolina here. Awesome. Awesome. Um, we have, um, let's see, I'm looking at a question. Um, so what's the average 
Um, weight of a grown Jersey cow. I know jerseys are much smaller. So what's that average weight for a Jersey cow? Probably about 850 to 900 pounds uh, Okay. full grown. Okay. Very nice. And now our ladies, they're hanging out with us and they're about seven months, eight months old at this point. They're not producing milk, correct? And they have Correct. to have a, a calf first before that happens. Okay. Yeah. So they are just spending their entire day doing exactly what you're seeing them do. They're eating some food. They're hanging out with their herd mates. Um, when they all get to hang out together, Farmer Matt, have you ever seen them play or maybe even um, fight a little bit? Like, how do you see when cows are happy and sad and playful and things like that? What are things cows do to show those similar kind of types of emotions? Uh, it, it's probably more noticeable, uh, I'd say, like in the spring and the fall where, where it's, you, you've got some, like in the spring, you've got some warmer temperatures coming on, uh, sun shining. Uh, you, you may see them out in the field uh, just button heads with each other and jumping and kicking and, and same way in the fall is starting to cool down. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're basically just like us. Um, uh, you know, we, we feel better when it's, uh, starting to warm up from winter time and, Mm -hmm. and we feel better in the fall when it's starting to cool down from summertime. Uh, they, and, and they're just, they're just like us. They, they can get heat stressed, uh, as well. So Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they need access to, to plenty of water and shade, uh, during the, the heat of the summer. Gotcha. Interesting. Well, and it sounds like they've got, you can see out in the pastures, lots of tree lines and plenty of water available for them. Now, are they normally in this pen or are they normally out on pasture? Is this where they live right now or are they just here for the chat for the day? Uh, they're they're normally out in the pasture um this this lot where we're at is usually where we put the the weaned uh calves uh whenever they come off the bottle we'll we'll typically put them in in this run right here but uh, Gotcha. uh there there's only two that that's just recently uh weaned uh this week and the the other three that's in there we we've got them kind of separated um they're they're just uh some show cows or show heifers um that uh bryson's taking a little little extra care of them uh Aww. keeping them with with just hay uh for for time being Sure. Yeah. And now it sounds like, though, since you just had 35 calves in the last six weeks, that look, that pen run area is going to be very full in a couple months when you start Yeah, leaving them. definitely. Definitely. And it's going to get very noisy around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um we've had a couple of questions come in we can see these colorful tags in their ears can you tell us about why you use tags what does it feel like for a cow what's the purpose of them uh the tags it's it's basically like getting your ear pierced uh basically and and it's just it's it's their identification um it, it's it's got their their number and we've just started basically at number one and and we're we're already uh almost to three thousand uh with with the heifer calves that's that's just recently been born so we're we're not far away from that three thousand mark um and in the tag you'll you'll notice uh another number uh if we can get her to cooperate <laughs> She just uh, wants love. <laughs> at the 2452 number, that is her mother. And the mm-hmm. salsa P, that is her dad, uh, yeah. which is called a sire. Uh, the mother's called a dam. Um, but we we like to, to put that information on there. That way we know who the, the calf is out of. Mm-hmm. Um, and also with... Um, with them being registered, they, they need to have a tattoo in their ear. Um, that, that may hurt just a little bit. It's, it's just, uh, it, it's like, uh, kind of like pins, uh, but maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you, you rub some ink 
in their ear and you put the number in that that gun and squeeze it in their ear in a particular spot and rub more ink in it that way it's it's very visible that way if they lose their tag uh or get it hung on something it comes out um we'll we'll know exactly who that calf is wow that's very cool. So it gives you some lineage a little bit on each one. It helps you keep track of them. Um, and I can see why, because they all look very similar. <laughs> so making sure you know <laughs> yeah. who is who. Um, and it sounds like it's very, very simple. It's just a quick a quick clip, just like when any of us would get our ears pierced. And they just live with it for their whole life. And it helps you um, be able to track them and maintain them, and make sure that they're healthy throughout their entire life. Very cool um let's see we i'm gonna try and get um one or two more questions here we oh some folks were wondering do you have a favorite cow on the farm uh yeah probably uh i would i, I i'd say my favorite cow is is probably uh our our six-year-old cow her name is ruth um She's a show cow. Uh, the last two years, she has won uh, Supreme Champion at the North Carolina State Fair. Um, so, so she's she's a, a pretty good cow, uh, obviously. Uh, to to win that uh, at the state fair, uh, we're we're extremely proud of her. Uh, wow. uh, and and we, you know, she she was born here and we, we bred for her and, and raised her. So that that's extra special, you know, versus, uh, you know, buying a cow and, and showing it and, and it wins. It, it means a lot more to us to, to, to have bred for that cow and, and raised her here. Awesome. Oh, gotta love those special cows that are on the farm who just are kind of those matriarchs on farms and, and just really have a name for themselves. That's really cool. Awesome. Thank yep. you. Um, let's see. Someone was curious, does Jersey milk taste different than other breeds that we were talking about? I, I think, I think so. Um, Jersey milk is, is known for its butter fat. Uh, Jersey's have, uh, tend to have a higher butterfat percentage versus Holsteins. And, and I, I'm not sure what the, the normal is for like Brown Swiss and Guernseys mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, I think Guernseys, uh, they're, they're also known uh, for their butterfat as well. Um, like I, I know I'm, I'm more familiar with Holsteins and their their butter fat is is very low uh you know typically I, I think they average somewhere around uh uh about three more than likely three to three point five uh and that's the butter fat is is kind of a a component of how we get paid the the more butter fat you have in your milk uh the the higher you get paid uh, for that as, as we're our jerseys, uh, right now we're, we're averaging, uh, a little over, uh, five on, on our butter fat. Wow. That's amazing. That's very cool. So, it, so yes, if you were to drink it raw, I guess at this point, you would definitely taste the difference, but when it goes to get processed, yep. then they always level it out to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's all milk, the same in the store. So, yep. Yeah. yeah, very cool. But all that extra butter fat, I'm sure, is used to make cheese and ice cream and yogurt and all those good things um, that require a little bit more butter fat. So that's pretty cool. With the, that Jersey milk is perfect for those things. Um, yep. Farmer Matt, we, uh, we're going to start wrapping up here. I did just want to let you know, um, North Iredell special education class is on with us today. And I just wanted to say a big thank you for letting them come out to your farm and see you, um, and, you know, making those special arrangements for them. So just wanted to let you know that, uh, they are very, very thankful for that experience. And as many of these folks that are on here today have just been saying, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for sharing your cows with us. Um, someone had mentioned that 
they actually published a book about Dixie and they loved getting to learn about Dixie and their kids. So thank you for, Awesome. for everything that you've done. Um, I do have one final question for you. Uh, you've talked a lot about all the different things you do as a farmer. You take care of these cows all day, every day. You make sure they're healthy. You make sure they're strong. You make sure they've got the right environment and the right food. It's a full-time job, like you mentioned. And I know and you didn't mention this, but you're also very active in your local fire company and in your local community. That's a lot to keep track of. How do you Yeah. do it, you know? And, and what's your why behind take, being a dairy farmer? I, I've always, whenever I was a kid, uh, you know, I, where I, I didn't actually grow up in this community. Uh, I actually grew up in the, the Harmony community uh, a little farther north of here. And, and there was just agriculture all around. Uh, you, you always seen cows, you always seen tractors and, you know, for, for a kid, uh, you know, I, I felt like, you know, that that's extra special to, to grow up, uh, in an environment like that. Um, but, you know, I always had the, the interest and, uh, it, it, it just so happened that, uh, I, I married into it. Um, Gotcha. but, uh, you know, I, I, we enjoy it, but it, it, it's a, it's a daily struggle Sure. uh with uh you know trying to to balance what you get paid on your milk check and trying to to make uh make the milk check go around uh uh to to everything that it needs to go to um Sure. <laughs> it, it's just it's always a struggle because we don't we don't get to set the price uh and and that's that's the the bad thing you know we, we know we've got a good product and you know if if we could set the price uh you know, it, it it'd be a, a big difference um Sure. but Yeah. uh you know now I, I see my son uh he's currently 12 uh he'll be 13 next month and this is this is what he lives for um And he he really really enjoys it. Uh, he probably has over thirty cows uh, of his own right now. Um, and and out of that, uh, I think we bought either two or three for him. The rest of them he has either bought or uh, it's just you know the the ones have multiplied. Um, having having several heifer calves basically, um, but. Uh, I, I'd say, you know, he's, he's my main reason that, that I keep, keep trying to do what we're doing so Yeah. that he'll have something, uh, one day if, if he's still interested at, at uh, whenever he gets out of school, um, Mm hmm he'll, he'll have something, uh, hopefully, uh, but, uh, we, we enjoy doing it, uh, also, I mean, Yeah. it, it's, you have to enjoy it to, to work this hard seven days a week. Um, Sure. Yeah. It's a labor it, of love and a lifestyle, it, <laughs> yeah, right? It's a complete yes, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yes. You, you can't, you can't make plans to, to amount to anything. And, <laughs> uh, whenever you do, the cows get out or uh, somebody right. says they can't come and help, you know, take your place or, you know, something like that, you know, uh, and, and whenever we're gone, which is very, very rare for all three of us to be gone somewhere, you know, we have to make sure that we have ample help lined up to, to cover for us. And if, um, uh, If something happens with that, uh, you know, then our plans obviously have to change. So it's, Mm -hmm. Sure. it's a struggle all the time, uh, pretty much, but, uh, we, we love what we do and, and Yeah. we love the, the Jersey cow. Uh, Yeah. the, the Jersey cow is, uh, very, very special to us. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. Jerseys are pretty darn cute and they make it a little bit easier to to just kind of love up on them every day and, Oh, and yeah. get to have some special time with them. So, Farmer Matt, to you and your family, we thank you so much for the hard work that you put in every day to take such great care of these cows and we can see the beautiful land behind you. Obviously, you're taking care of the land around you too. So that way it's It's providing a healthy grass for your cows to enjoy and eat and also keeping all the water is clean. There's just there's so much to being a dairy farmer beyond just caring for that cow. So thank you so much.
for being great stewards of the land and also being a, a wonderful member of your community. Um, we've loved having you this year, being a host farmer, getting to follow all three of our adorable girls. Um, and make sure to give a, a little uh, shout out. Thank you to your son, too. I know he's part of the help throughout the year. Um, and every now and then he's with us with these chats, too. So just let him know. We appreciate all of his help, too. And 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 your wife, too. Oh. Speak of the devil. There, <laughs> I was he is. Say, there he is. I was going to say, he's usually around <laughs> for this. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to share before we tune off today? I, I just want to uh, say thank you to everyone that's participated in the program. Um, I, I think it's a very valuable resource, and, and I, I, I would want to believe that everyone has learned a little bit of something. Um, uh, it, this, this is great for the dairy industry uh it it, it provides uh true information from the source uh mm -hmm. versus uh google or whatever else that you you might try to attempt to get your information <laughs> from um right. but I, I i appreciate the opportunity uh to to help um and and i i wish that that i could do more but my time just don't allow it and i, <laughs> I know several groups uh uh, have have reached out uh, wanting to do farm tours and stuff and uh, unfortunately we're we're not really set up for it um, hopefully one day we will be uh, that that's my goal because uh, mm -hmm. I, I I enjoy doing stuff like this uh, yeah. uh, and and getting people involved uh, mm -hmm. and seeing what actually happens on on dairy farms and stuff yeah. but um I, I apologize if, if you've sent a message and I haven't <laughs> responded back. Uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to send the messages. Uh, and, and I've, I've gotten to, to read through most of them. I know I've still got uh, a list to, to go through, but uh, <laughs> uh, I just uh, I, I hope you understand uh, now, maybe uh, with, with this uh, conversation that, um, uh, I stay pretty busy, uh, <laughs> I'd say so. every day. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I, I hope to, to have the opportunity to do it next year. And, and I hope, uh, we, we can get even more participation for next year. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Farmer Matt. Um, we've loved having you. And I know everyone is very thankful for the time you've given us today and all year taking great photos and, and being part of this program and sharing your story. And we completely understand, you know, farm tours aren't an option for, for some small, for some family farms. And that's okay. That's why you're in this. That's how we connect with you. We get to do these live chats. We get to connect with you via pictures and some videos and, um, and we love it just the same. So thank you so much for your time and your dedication to the program. Um, and educating us on the dairy industry. And thank you all for being part of this program. As Farmer Matt said, I want to echo him. We love having you share the news, welcome other teachers, other homeschool groups, other libraries, anything that you can think of. They're welcome to participate next year um, and be part of this program. We love having you. Registration opens May 1st, so we welcome you to sign up. And with that, we all will we'll say goodbye, and we hope to see you next year. Take care, everybody. Bye.